Hey there guys, so today the global server has sent out a player feedback survey to the global community where you can give your feedback etc about the game of Brave XVS global version. Uh, some people have asked me to talk about the survey, give my opinions etc. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Now keep in mind this is basically just my opinions. You may or may not agree with them. This is just a way for me to pretty much talk about the game, but also really to cover some topics that are gone over in the survey. So I'll include a link to the official news as well as the actual survey in the comments. Everyone should, if you're, you know, you're able to, you should take the survey because just for participating, you're going to get 500 lapis, uh, 50 times 20 energy and 100 VIP coins. So the survey takes about like a minute and a half to fill out and you'll get all these rewards. Um, it's not mailed to everyone. It's only mailed to people that actually take the survey because you put in your, your, your player ID to get the rewards in the mail. They'll be mailed out in the future. But, um, but yeah, so you know this, this is the news. You'll see it in game. And if you click the link, you'll be brought to this survey and we're going to go over the survey um i already took the survey myself earlier and sent it in um but still i'm still going to go over the survey and go over the answers etc now i do want to make it extremely extremely clear and please i'm going to request that when you take the survey you fill out the answers that you personally believe in do not just fill out the things that I chose because those are my opinions. If you agree with the opinions, by all means, put the same things. But I want everyone to fill out the fill out the survey based on their own personal opinions. The, the point of this video is not to influence anyone to like vote the same way I'm voting. That's why I usually avoid videos on like player votes and stuff because I don't want to influence the outcome. But I still think this is a good survey, and it really does deserve talking about. So I'm going to give you my opinions, but I just really want everyone to fill out the survey based on how they feel about the game, which very well may be different than how I feel about the game. So before we get into this, though, we are going to talk a little bit about the game and how it's doing. Now, very frequently earlier today when the survey came out, you saw lots of people posting information from... Um, I think it's called Sensor Tower, which is basically a website that tracks like mobile games and the spending in those games. And we're going to briefly look at those numbers and compare them for a few previous months. Now, once again, another disclaimer, I have to say, this is third party tracking information, which is not the full picture and it only tracks Android and iOS. There are other ways to purchase in Brave XVS, for example, Amazon coins. Uh, I think it's called the One Store in, um, I think it's Korean areas or maybe just Southeast Asia areas. One Store is their, their shop. It doesn't track that. So this sensor data stuff is just uh, information based on the Android and the iOS version of the game where people spend in it. But it still gives us an overall general idea of how the game's doing month per month. So we're going to look at, look at this data. So basically, the summary here is it looks like the game did not do well in the month of August. And I'm going to talk about why I feel, I feel that's the reason. But for the month of August, based on third-party information, sensor data information, this is the global server um, the Android version and the iOS version. This is only money spent in those two versions. This is not the full picture. There are other stores like Amazon, One Store, etc. But anyway, you know, en enough going over that. So based on this, it looks like the game pulled in approximately half a million dollars between those two stores in the month of August, not counting the other stores. Um, and in the month of August, there was Jade and the Banners. There was Jade and, Glaci and Glaciella, the War of the Visions. There was Kier, who was, you know, you know. Uh, Wondrous Lightning and Hope, which was good unit, but the prices were jacked up heavily for her. And then Ella Spiris, who we all know how that turned out. And that was the month of August. And it looks like we're going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some other months as well. We're going to make some comparisons. It looks like that August did not do well, and that's probably what prompted the global team to send out a player feedback survey to find out why August went so poorly. 
I mean, it doesn't take a brain scientist to, to, to figure out why it went so poorly because, you know, global is usually carried on the back of global exclusive units and we had Kier and Elaspiris in August. I mean, honestly, we could end the video right here and everyone, everyone would realize that was the problem in August. They had two train wrecks of units for our global, our global units, but we're going to go over some other stuff as well. So that was August. Now let's look at July of 2023. This was our anniversary. Anniversaries are always going to be higher months. Um, honestly speaking, though, the anniversary wasn't as good as previous years. Uh, approximately a million dollars was made between Android and iOS on the um, the anniversary. Uh, and again, I'm not an expert on Centra data. I don't know if this is like profit or what. I don't know. This is mostly data. People have people have been you know sending me on Discord all morning. I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Um, it, it helps us get an idea of how the game's doing month per month. Uh, but for the anniversary month, we had Richt and Elena, Snublinka and Riddar, Zidane and Iko, and then Malfazy. Now, obviously, for the global units, Richt, Elena, and Malfazy, these were three pretty good units. And we did decently. That being said, they weren't the super greatest, because Elena, as we know, Elena, even when she came out, people were like, Elena is not really as much as we were hoping for an anniversary unit. Like she, you know, again, we're not gonna, we're not gonna rehash the whole Elena debate, but um, you know, she's an okay unit, not quite up to the quality of what we were expecting for anniversary. I feel like Rick was a grand slam. I think Rick was amazing. Um, and then Malfazy, I feel like was really good as well. So July did pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and look, because this is, you know, August, uh, you know, just like a, like a regular month. Now we're gonna look at a little bit earlier this month, April, of 23 um and this was just you know again a non-holiday month just a regular month but this month we had some really good global units and global upgrades we had last fall in roca dark lineage secure and frost verita stark lineage you know throwaway units but then we had flaring rain who as we know got some heavy global upgrades and that made him very very desirable and then Dark Knight Dwayne, who not everyone loves. I think I, I think he was overall a good unit, but he wasn't the most popular. Honestly, I think this month of April was mostly carried on the back of Flaring Aether Rain. His global upgrades made him so desirable, everyone wanted him. And the month did really well. You know, a non-anniversary, just random, random month, no holidays, nothing, did 800,000 in sales between these two stores. You know, more when you include the other stores. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now let's go back a year. We're going to look at the previous year. So in August of this year, you know, 500. In August of last year, the game did about 800. Again, just a random non-anniversary, non-holiday month of last year. But the game did significantly better than this year. And again, Let's look at the units. We had Balthier, who was overall a pretty good unit bet last year. You know, Vaughn and Rain, Final Fantasy 1, bleh, whatever. But Beach Blaster Olive was our global unit, and she did have a little bit of controversy about being the first global SLB unit. But most people could agree, even if you didn't like SLB, like myself, Olive was still very well designed. Even though she was an SLB, it was an SLB done right. You know, so, and she, she honestly was a good introduction to SLBs for global units. You know, it was kind of doom and gloom. The game's over when Global finally, you know, crosses the Rubicon and does SLBs. But I think Olive was a really good way to ease us into accepting the inferior unit design of SLB. Because she was very well made, I feel. And she saw use for a long time. And then Titus and Lulu, um, you know, he didn't make... You know, here comes the pun. He didn't make the biggest splash because uh, Global, he wasn't quite as big of a deal as he was on JP. But still, I feel like this month did so well because they created a really nice Global unit. And that's, that's, that's the key here. When you make these, like, terrible Global units like here in Alice Spears, people don't want them. When you make a unit that's obviously strong people are going to go ahead and spend and get these units. That's a big deal. And then we're gonna, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show a extreme month when you make, when you go really far outside the box and you make a unit crazy overpowered. 
like last year's anniversary is the Sylvie month and the Chizuru month. So Sylvie and Wilk, Wilk, eh, whatever, but Sylvie, Sylvie for the anniversary last year, then some skippable, skippable banners like Dark Rain and, um, or Dark Fina, Rain, Poppy, Lefty, or Warrior's Prayer, blah, who cares? But then Chizuru. So when you get Sylvie and Chizuru in the same month, you get 1.6 million in sales. That's excessive. That's really nice because the units are freaking good. It doesn't take a 600 IQ to understand that you make good units, they sell well. You make terrible units, they don't sell well. I mean, come on here. This is this is this is not that hard to figure out. But anyway, anyway, we're going to go to the survey, and we're going to go over the survey of the game as a whole. Although the survey does mostly focus on the month of August, because that was like, that, that was a big drop, because you start put, putting out dumpsters, or you start jacking up the price on the one good unit of the month. Like, even the people that were going to spend, all of a sudden, you know, you're, caught, you're charging like 25% more, or whatever, whatever, more, I don't know how much more. It was like 12000 more, I forget. It was more expensive. And people just don't want to spend as much. Like you, 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 you go, you go down on your 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 sales. Anyway, anyway, let's talk about the survey itself. So in the survey, um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and fill it out again. I'm not going to send it in a second time. Like I said, I already filled this out earlier today. But um, yeah, so you put in your player ID here. That 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 way you can get your rewards. Um, in game, you know, you're going to be getting, uh, you know, lapis, some energy potions, and VIP coins for doing this. Uh, so, what social media platforms do you typically use? You know, fill them out. I personally used um, only YouTube. So, from this group, you know, I don't really use Facebook. I don't really use Twitter. I don't use Instagram. I don't use TikTok. Sorry, Addison. Um, basically, I use YouTube as my social media, and that's kind of mostly it. That's what I chose. But again, you know, definitely fill out whatever you use for social media. Um, what kind of social media post from Brave XBS do you like? I personally chose um, message from the devs. Uh, the, 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 the main thing, and this is kind of like a kind of, kind of a negative almost because message from the devs usually is something like a producer letter or a message from the production team saying there was a major mistake in the game. Not a mistake, but there was a major mismanagement in the game, and we we messed up. We're sorry. We're going to try to course correct. So this is stuff like, you know, the Xeno Gears and the Kane banner two years ago when they jacked up the prices heavily, and then they apologized in a producer letter shortly after that. Other things was when they did the Dark Visions thing and they went and they, they made the Dark Visions bosses, the sub bosses, ridiculously over tanky as like a global nerf. And then they put out a message from the devs, we're sorry, we're not going to do it again. Stuff like that. Those are messages from the devs. And as I, I don't ever like the fact that messages from the devs are needed because if they're needed, it does mean there was a major humbug and they're having to address it. And that's terrible. But I do appreciate them taking like responsibility for these huge mistakes and at the very least apologizing for it. And I appreciate that. So when a major misstep in the game happens from the development team and they come out and say, we're sorry, I really appreciate that. Especially when they're sincere about it. Which is not always the case because they said, you know, for example, one of the, one of the messages from the devs was, we're sorry that we skipped Zeal's upgrades. We're never going to skip JP upgrades again. Well, that turned out to be a huge lie. Because that... <laughs> Bart's win? Uh, yeah, but anyway. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the messages from the devs, uh, they, they actually do correct what they're saying. Anyway, let's move on. So where do you catch the latest game information from? Uh, In-game notices for me. Uh, YouTube for me. Although... I'm the one getting my own medicine from YouTube, but uh, you know YouTube. Uh, oh, also the the YouTube live streams. Yeah, the YouTube. So when the when the official live streams happens, I do that. I get my information from Discord and Reddit, and I get my information from the JP version. So I I pretty much get my information all over the place. Uh, yeah, you know, again, I don't really use Facebook and Twitter. Um, honestly, I should write Twitter because when they put out like you know maintenance notices, that's usually on Twitter, and I'll 
I'll read those. So I guess I should that. The only thing I don't really use is Facebook. You know, sorry, Gert. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's where I get my information all over the place. I, I am very active in Brave Exvius and I monitor lots of uh, news sources. So what games do you play other than Brave Exvius? I typed in RPG and strategy games. Too many to list. That, that's what I put in. It's just way too many. Way too many. You know, as far as what games do I play as much as Brave Exvius at the current time? Honestly, none. Um, you know, I've played other games, you know, hardcore, so to speak, in the past. Like, you know, I played World of Warcraft for a while. Stuff like that. Um, but at the current time, honestly, Brave Exvius is the only game that I play consistently. Uh, how much do you play X Brave Exvius in a given day? Honestly, this question, I, w I wish you could say in a given week, because it really depends on, like, a new content day, like, you know, Clash of Wills day. It'll be, like, f three to five hours or more. Um, on days like last week, it was, like, less than an hour. I literally log in, do, do my daily shard dungeon, and I log back out for the whole day because last week had nothing going on. So honestly, it really depends. I think I chose three hours as like the, 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 the moderate, because um, when, we, when we have new content, I'll play for, I'll play for a lot. Uh, but most of the time, it's less than an hour on like slow weeks. You know, I'll log in and do my arena orbs once a day, stuff like that, not much. But um, I chose this just for, you know, it is a game I enjoy. How satisfied are you with Brave Backstreet? I think I chose Dissatisfied because currently, um, a lot of bad stuff has been going on. The prices have been going up quite a bit. Uh, the unit quality has been... It's hit or miss. It's, I don't want to say it's been going down, because, again, we just had Rick, We just had Malphazy. These are good units. But then we had Kier and Elispirus and, like, Elena, sort of, kind of. And I'm not happy with that. And, again, the price increases have been hugely dissatisfying for me. Um... The fact that they, uh, once again, this week, no, that actually has been going on for like two weeks, two or three weeks, the 5K Lapis Bundles are gone. The login VIP coins are gone. The, um, the, uh, what, what is it? The, uh, all the, oh my God, the crown dungeons that were the silver crowns, you know, the, you know, we're getting alternatives to the upgrades themselves, but like the, the, Emperor Gigantors, the STMR Moogles, all that kind of, you know, side rewards from the crown stages themselves, they're just gone. We're missing them. So they're taking away lots and lots of currency, and then they're up upcharging the prices, like the lightning banner, the vanille banner is like what, sixty-three thousand for a pity if you don't get the if you don't get the fifty fifty on the guarantee. Like if you're going for vanille and you you, you do the step up and you get Saz instead. Well, now we're going 63000 to get vanilla. Like prices are just going through the roof. And the rewards are going down because they're giving us less and less. They're taking more and more away. And I'm dissatisfied about that. Unhappy. And please explain your choice. All the stuff I just said, I kind of typed. I didn't. I wasn't quite so long-winded. But I typed in, basically, I said, unit quality is decreasing, prices are increasing, and free currency is decreasing as well. Also, bundles are getting more expensive and less valuable. So there we go. How satisfied are you with Clash Wills? Okay, so full disclosure, on the survey, I clicked satisfied, and honestly speaking, that was I chose that mostly just as a show of support that I really do like Clash of Wills. But the honest answer, what I should have been, is kind of dissatisfied. Now, this next question, I'm not sure if it actually registered because I did choose Satisfied, but I still filled this out anyway. It says, if you chose to Satisfied, please explain. So I, I chose Satisfied, but I still did my explanation for the Dissatisfied. So what I chose for Clash of Wills, why am I unhappy with it? I, sh I chose the rewards are not good. Now, this I chose, I chose three options, but this, this is... Um, this is kind of a strange thing to say. So for one, on the one hand, Clash of Wills gear, like, you know, the Magisters, the Rulers, literally the best gear in the game. So it is the best gear in the game, and it comes from Clash of Wills. So the rewards are not good. What I mean by that is I mean, like, the monthly clear rewards. You'll notice lots and lots of people will say, what's the point of getting rank 1 in Clash of Wills? Because I can get rank 4,000, and I still get basically the same rewards. It's almost meaningless. The, the only reward that really matters is Xenostone. And once you reach, you know, enough Xenostone, you just don't really need more. 
And because I've gotten high ranking over the last two years of Clash of Wills, I've got every single piece of gear that I possibly need. I've also got like an, a, a stockpile of, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure the amount, a lot of Xenostone left over. So whether I get rank one or I get rank 7,000, like the difference is meaningless because the side rewards are like some STMR tickets that are irrelevant, no lapis at all, or like the difference of like a thousand Xenostone versus 600. And I just don't need Xenostone anymore. So the rewards were amazing early on, but now that I have everything, it's like they're not good anymore. So I chose that. I also choose it got boring, and this is it, it pains me to say this because as much as I love Clash of Wills, it really has gotten boring, kind of, because it's it's they've fallen into a very formulaic template-based Clash of Wills, like. Every boss feels very similar. If you just took their sprite away and just had AI, it's so incredibly similar. It's like now we've always got a boss that does like one or two random things that for the most part don't matter. The boss will have like, you know, one or two turns where he hits the tank really, really hard. And then maybe one or two turns where the boss buffs themselves. You've got to line up your burst on like turn four. Push a threshold, then phase two starts. It's the same thing, maybe slightly higher numbers, and you finish. Like, all the bosses just feel so similar now. There's very little innovation remaining in Clash of Wills. Remember the earlier bosses? Like, they were pretty different. Um, and one I bring up very often is Mortarum, the, the castle from, like, season two. Way back in the day. The castle was very, very... I found the castle very interesting because it was very different than all the previous bosses. The AI changed depending on your actions. Um, it just felt very different. An another boss that I really loved was Kairos. Um, Kairos just had a lot going on. You know, really dangerous boss. Uh, it was it was hard to tank. He did a lot of cool, interesting abilities. And then another one, um, obviously the cherry on top, is Thranator, the anniversary the first year anniversary Clash of Wills boss. Thranator was probably the greatest boss ever done in Clash of Wills. Um, you know, it was just like multiple, multiple phases. The boss changed uh, his AI pretty heavily between all the phases. The fields went up. It was called back to the previous years. Now, obviously, I do realize that was an anniversary boss, and anniversary bosses are usually more interesting and cooler. But then you compare it to this year's anniversary boss. Remember what it was? Vestige of Ethne, that little girl from the Ripped story event. Who, re who even remembers Ethne at all? If I, before I had said that, I could have said the second year anniversary boss, and I bet most of you would have been, would have been scratching your head. Uh, who was the anniversary? I completely forgot who it was. You know why you forgot who it was? It was just a copy-paste of every other month. The anniversary of this boss of Clash of Wills this month was so generic and nothing, and Ethne was just like there, and the minute her event closed, everyone forgot about her. I'll bet you no one forgot about Thranator from the from the year and a half ago. Thranator was amazing. People today still talk about Thranator. So yeah, the last year, Clash of Wills has been getting kind of boring, and that's unfortunate. I want them to mix it up and make it exciting like previous bosses you know kairos mortarum thranator these were fun interesting bosses things like uh ethne or who do we just have that samurai guy i don't even know his name the samurai dude like i couldn't tell you a single move they did because it was just forgettable <laughs> it was forgettable Anyway, and the other one I chose was It Was Too Easy. That's going to be a very controversial pick because I do know a large portion of my audience thinks Clash of Wills is too hard. I'm speaking strictly from a player who really enjoys challenges and for a player with lots of options, all the best units, etc. It does still feel a little bit too easy, but I certainly do expect lots of pushback on this one where people tell me in the comments, you know, it's not easy at all, whale problems, or whatever. But again, this was my personal opinions. That's what I went over for uh, my choices. How satisfied are you with Dark Visions? Very dissatisfied. I don't like Dark Visions. It's no secret here. Um, and here's the funny thing is because 
the game is basically boiled down at this point to either Clash of Wills or Dark Visions. I don't want Dark Visions to go away because take away Dark Visions, we've got like nothing but Clash of Wills. And even Clash of Wills is being disappointed. But Dark Visions, once upon a time, was fun. I used to love Dark Visions. And I'm talking very early on. Who remembers the first three Dark Visions bosses? This is going back like four years at this point. But who remembers Dark Visions number one, two, and three? Remember those final bosses? Like, for example, the Shadow or the Shadow Bayonet or the Whisper of Bayonet. I forget, I forget what it was called, but the Bayonet Dark Visions boss. This was a literal trial boss. The boss had phases, the damage taken score. You could have forget. You can forget that because the boss dealt tons of damage. Um, de dealing damage was hard. Like there was, you needed a tank. You needed mitigations. Like. Dark Vision's bosses used to be awesome. Remember the very early Ramu boss? Now, it wasn't, he wasn't super hard or anything, but at the very least, it, it did stuff. These days, is, these days, what does a Dark Vision's boss do? One or two AoE physical attacks, um, <laughs> lots of dispels just to be irritating, and then, like, again, some attacks you've got to negate. Like, it's just, they just don't really do anything. Except for gimmicky, irritating stuff. Like, for example, the one we just had, had those fields. Like, I don't feel those fields did anything except irritate me. I don't know. I, I, I just don't find excitement in Dark Visions. But I still do it because it's like all the content the game has. is Dark Visions and Clash of Wills. If you're satisfied with Dark Visions, please explain. It's too easy. The rewards are not good. It got boring. There we go again. There we go again. Same thing, basically. Um, so it is too easy. So again, Dark Visions is very brainless. Uh, as far as strategy goes, there's very little strategy involved in Dark Visions. It's basically you look up the AI, you check off a few boxes, like if the boss does dark damage, I need a dark resist buff. There's not really a lot of planning involved in a Dark Visions team. And then you just, you know, optimize your rotation to deal big boy damage. That's the whole fight. And I, I am oversimplifying a little bit, but at the end of the day, that's really what it is. And you could say the same thing about all content. Clash of Will is the same thing. You see what the boss does, and you build your team, and you burst on turn four, and you burst again on turn seven, the Clash of Wills is over. Well, you know why? That's because Clash of Wills turned into that. Clash of Wills was not always like that. Again, go look at a, go look at a video for Thranator or Kairos, etc. Those were very interesting, intricate, involved Clash of Wills strategies. Clash of Wills recently has become just like Dark Visions. It's very boring, very formulaic, and very copy-paste. And Dark Visions has been that way for a long time. Dark Visions was not always that way. The first three, the first three Dark Visions events were top-tier amazing. Um, then Dark Visions, it got boring. Uh, oop, the, reward, the, the rewards are not good. Um, again, same thing, Dark Matter. Now, for the top 10 players... You're getting, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50,000 lapis. Obviously, for those players, the rewards, honestly speaking, are still not good. You know why they're still not good? Because the person that got rank one, I guarantee you, they spent way more than 50,000 lapis as an investment to get that rank one. So the payoff is not worth it. So the rewards are not good in Dark Visions. Um, not to mention the Dark Visions weapons are... No, well, they're good. They are good. They are good. So the, the two-handed rod is really good. The two-handed katana is really good. Okay, so the Dark Visions weapons are good, but um, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like they're not good enough. And then, and then uh, too easy to get born. So there you go. How satisfied are you with the global... Oh, here we go. So here we go into the stuff focusing on the month of August because August was a big thumbs down for them. How satisfied are you with the global units that were added in August? The, no, the global units. We're talking specifically about Kier and Elispirus. How happy are you with Kier and Elispirus? Very dissatisfied. If I could go down here to Bargain Basement, extremely unhappy, flip a table dissatisfied, I would have done it. But the lowest I could go is very dissatisfied. Um, and then I, th I think I typed in... Uh, nope, nope, down here. So okay, I did that. Then if you, could choose, if you chose dissatisfied or very, please explain up to two options. The stats, okay, not stats, but the skill sets do not live up to expectations. Right here, right here. We used to have good, well, we still do. We usually have good global units. Rikt is amazing. Malfazi is really good. But then you go back further, we had like Roberta, Chizuru, Sylvie, 
Kaito, uh, even um, some that aren't quite as good but still amazing, like Tsukiko, we used to have really amazing global units. Nowadays, we've got Elaspirus. Elaspirus. What? So yeah, did not live up to expectations. And then the other, and down here, I typed in like a little bitty miniature rant. Like I, I wasn't rude or anything, but I was certainly blunt. And I basically said I'm just embarrassed for the global unit design team based on the month of August. Like the, I, 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 I really said that. I said something like, like the global design team has made amazing units like Roberta and Shizuru and Sylvie. And then for the month of August, they made the copy-paste Kier and they made the embarrassing Elispirus. And I said it is an embarrassment to the reputation of the global unit design team because they've made such high-quality units in the past and then they put out Elispirus. It's literally an embarrassment. And I wrote that. I mean, I'm, I was being honest. I, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't, I don't think I was rude. I think I was polite but very blunt. In my, in my response. Um, how satisfied are you with the global upgrades in August? Uh, so the, the only global upgrade we got in August was Wondrous Lightning. So Wondrous Lightning got morale scaling, auto morale fill, and her leader skill was changed. Um, honestly speaking, I wrote to satisfy. I mean, I, we're going to talk about why. So if you chose, shows me why. So here we go. I was expecting... Um, upgrades for a different unit. So Lightning didn't really need upgrades. You know who needed upgrades was dummies like Jaden, Glaciella, or Kier, or Elispirus, like Hope. Hope needs, like all of these needed upgrades, but they upgraded the only unit of the month that didn't really need it, which was Lightning. Like that's the only unit that didn't need upgrades, and she got them, and they were, they were decent, but I also wrote other, and I explained down here, the reason, another reason that I don't like it is her leader skill. Now, Lightning's leader skill is strong. It certainly is. But it also segregates your party even more heavily than leader skills are already segregating your party. So if Lightning is your leader, you basically can't use some of your favorite units on the same team, like Rikt or Ibarra. Stuff like that. Like these are units that are relevant and should be very, very good in parties. But because Lightning is like taking an axe and chopping your team roster in half and saying, you can use this, 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 this unit, but you cannot use this, this, and this unit. I hate that. I hate the way it divides your party like that. I think Lightning, if they wanted to give her a good leader skill, it should have been just all Clash of Wills units, just like Elena. And it didn't have to be 900. It could have been a 750 for all Clash. It could have been a copy of Elena's leader skill. It would have been fine. You could have it Rebellion and Clash of Wills. And it could have been only in Clash of Wills. Obviously, they're not going to give you the all Clash of Wills tag in Dark Visions. So for only Clash of Wills, Lightning's leader skill should have been Rebellion plus Clash of Wills. So she would have basically been the upgrade to Elena because it's the same as Elena plus Clash of Wills plus uh, Rebellion. But they didn't. They decided to force you to divide your team in half. And I, I don't like that. How satisfied are you with August bundles? Very dissatisfied because, again, I talk about this. They're just taking the bundles and making them worse. So, for one thing, the Lapis for Shard bundle is just gone. It's just missing completely. It seems, seems to be gone forever. Um, it's been gone for about a month at this point, And it's just, I guess it's gone forever. So, the 5K for 50 Shards missing and then um this is not specific to august specifically but for those of you that do actually spend on the game you'll know what i'm talking about in the past the bundles for cash were so much better so much better now i forget the exact ratio but by memory it was i think 99 dollars for twenty six thousand lapis and 50 unit shards these days, I, I, I should have wrote this down. I forget the ratio, but it's something like $50, and you can buy it twice, so it's really $100, but $50 for 25 shards and like less lapis. I don't remember specifically. 
But okay, so I, I, okay, this is my mistake not coming prepared. Uh, in any case, trust me, trust me. Anyone that spends money and used to spend it as well, they know the bundle quality has gone down dramatically. They take lapis, they've taken lapis out of a lot of under bundles, and they've replaced it with like garbage tickets. Like you know, a bundle that used to give five thousand lapis for cash is now giving um, you know an ex ticket. Or 20 EX tickets. Like, really? Come on. Come on. So the bundle quality has gone way down, both for free-to-play, like, you know, the, the shard bundle that for Lapis is gone, and for spenders, the bundle quality is going down. Uh, you know, the, the buy Lapis for cash, the ratio is way down. If you chose to satisfy, please explain. Not enough Lapis in the bundles. Um, didn't have the items I wanted because they, 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 they used to have other stuff. And uh, there were no bundles that seemed to work. So this right here is when I feel like spending, I, I, I like this bracket. I like the 25 to 47 bracket. You know, the, the big brackets are kind of, kind of uh, I, you know, they're kind of kind of out there. And then the little cheap brackets are, are fine. I, I, think they, they, I think these are fine. So this is like Fountain of Lapis, Hill, Hill of Fortune. Those are fine. I still get those every month. But right here, you know, the shard bundles, stuff like that, the quality has gone way down. And I didn't, I don't like that. So what contents do you like in Brave XVS? You know, again, as, as much as I'm disappointed in it, I'm still wanting to support Clash of Wills. I chose Clash of Wills. I also chose uh, Chamber of the Vengeful because I really miss it. That's like the Morgana, the, uh, the Elf on the Shelf, those bosses, I love those. And I chose Hidden Chamber of Arms, not so much because I love the Queen, the queen trial. It's fine, it's good, it's fun, I enjoy it. But because I want, I want to see more. I want to see more really challenging fights like the Queen Bianca. That's what I chose, my three options. Uh, please explain your choices. I basically just said I really enjoy challenging trial content that is not based around a damage number. So like stupid uh, Dark Visions and Clash of Wills too. Um, you know, the whole point of it is hit 2.5 billion or hit, you know, 22 billion. I, I, I hate that stupidity. I like the challenge of surviving the boss and bulking up my party. That's my fun thing. So I really love Chamber of the Vengeful and Hidden Chamber of Arms. And I type down here, you know, I love trial level content that is not based around a damage score. Uh, what is your favorite Final Fantasy title? That would be Final Fantasy IX. I enjoy that the most. You know, I've talked about it before. I enjoy the story in IX. I think the theme, not the theme, the, the scenery, the setting of IX is really fun. It's like the, the classic fantasy um, with a little bit of, you know, steampunk or whatever, the, the airships and all that kind of stuff. But still, IX is great. The battle system was, was deep, neat. I, I enjoy the little crystal leveling system with the, uh, the gear and the... Anyway, I enjoyed Final Fantasy IX. It had a good story, too. Also has some really good cutscenes. Um, uh, my favorite cutscene of all is the attack of the Silver Dragons near the end of the game. I mean, I'm, not, I'm going kind of off tangent here, but um, I really just love that cutscene when they're, they're flying towards the portal. and it's, it's very reminiscent of Final Fantasy IV when you're approaching the Giant of Babel and, and you know, all your friends from the whole game come and join you in the, the fight against uh, the Giant of Babel. Same thing in Nine. When you're, go when you're going towards the portal to uh, Kuja's Lair or whatever, and all the silver dragons come out, and then all your little friends from the whole game come and join the battle, you know, uh, Beatrix and uh, Baku, etc., etc. Anyway, Nine was great. If you haven't played it, go play it. Uh, what are your favorite moments when playing Final Fantasy FFBE? Um, when playing Dark Pit? No, I didn't choose that. <laughs> um, let's see. What, 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 what did I choose? Uh... I think I chose this again. I'm I'm, tr I'm trying to be supportive here, and I also chose when I'm able to summon the unit I wanted. Because I mean, let's, let's be honest here. It feels good to get the unit you wanted. It really does. So I, I chose. Yeah, you know when when I when I summon for a unit and I get that unit, happy, ha uh, happiness. Oh, I also chose when. I, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I also chose defeating strong. I, I didn't choose Clash of Wills. I chose when defeating strong enemies, meaning trials. So when I beat the Queen Bianca trial. I felt good. When I beat the Vestige of Morgana, I felt great. Stuff like that. Really enjoy uh, defeating strong enemies. What kind of improvements would you like to see in Brave Exvius? Um, I think I'd basically just rehash what I've already been saying. Um, I want to go back to when global units were done well. 
I want to go back to the days where they're making Kaito, Roberta, Chizuru, Sylvie, stuff like that. And Sylvie, Sylvie's a little, a little bit of a controversial one because I, I know I know a lot of players say Sylvie is too good, and I don't disagree. I think Sylvie is maybe a little bit over the line of way too strong, and that's fine. We don't need Sylvie tier. Sylvie really is a level of her own. But like Roberta, Chizuru, Kaito, Sukiko, Olive. You see, what I'm, you see what we're doing here? Like, the Neovisions of last year were, for the most part, really, really good. The Neovisions of this year have a lot of misses, like Ella Spiris, Kier, stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I typed in, I want to see improvements to re go back to um, how we used to be. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, for this one, I chose um, Required Answer... I'm, I'm not going to actually send this in. Better units. So for this one, I chose enhancements to the current Final Fantasy series contents. Um, because Final Fantasy series contents, honestly speaking, let's be honest here, it's just throwaway. It's all throwaway content. So any content that involves classic Final Fantasy games is just waste. a waste. It's dumb. It's a raid. It's a mog farm. Or it's a box farming event. Or it's like a chronicle battle that's super, super easy. Or it's an exploration that while you're doing the exploration, you're just getting irritated from, from random battles. It's not fun. So I want to return to good Final Fantasy series content. For example, series boss battles were amazing. Series boss battles were nostalgic. They were interesting. They were fun. And then after three of them, they became garbage. Because, you know, X-Death... Emperor, um, Kefka. These were really fun, really challenging, really well done. And I guess people complained they were too hard. And then we started getting like Chaos and and Braska's final Aeon and stuff like that. And series boss battles became stupidly easy and like almost OTK content. And at that point, no one really cared anymore and they stopped making them. Like, give us the hard, fun stuff. And, um... Okay, so I can't, I can't do this. Apparently, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fill in. My, I'm not going to send this in twice. But um, when I sent this in earlier, it then brought me to a new question and said, please, please elaborate on your your answer number 16. So it said, please please elaborate what you want to see Final Fantasies. And I basically just, what I told you, I went in and said, all the Final Fantasy content is throwaway, trivial, pointless content like farming events. I want to see fun content involving Final Fantasy. For example, in Clash of Wills, instead of making us fight Ethne, who is a random no-one-cares unit, let's go and fight um, Bagan, you know, the, the Final Fantasy IV Captain of the Guard. You remember in Final Fantasy IV, when you get back to Castle Baron, you, you go through the waterway, and then, you know, Bagan, the Captain of the Guards, comes and, um, inter comes and uh, starts escorting you to the king, and then Paladin and Porm are like, uh-uh, he's, he's a bad guy. And then you fight him. Uh, yeah, give us cool boss battles based on classic Final Fantasy. We don't need you to make up random nobodies that no one cares about because no one cares about them. So yeah, give us more cool Final Fantasy content. Anyway, I have spent, it looks like, 45 minutes going on and on about this survey. But uh, it was fun to talk about. So again, go ahead and fill in the survey yourself. Uh, get your rewards. And again, please fill in your own legitimate answers. Whatever you feel like is your personal opinion. Do not just echo my opinions unless you, you honestly agree with them. Then by all means, go for it. But please use your own opinions. And let's try to make Brave Exvius the game that we used to love when it made lots and lots of money and the game was very healthy because they used to make good units they used to they still do sometimes but uh yeah please please never again never again Kieran Ellis Beerus please no just please no okay see you in a bit